Hi, I'm Chang Li. I work at HashiCorp. In this video, I want to walk you through the cloud operating model with a focus on the application deployment layer. First of all, who we are. We are HashiCorp, a company that provides a set of cloud infrastructure automation solutions across all the critical layers to help organizations to find a fast path to cloud, accelerate their application delivery process. And over the years, we had the chance to work with a broad range of companies, from born-in-the-cloud startups to some of the world's largest, most complex organizations. And we find a common theme in their success, in their digital transformation, is that they're adopting a new operating model, a cloud operating model. So the basis of the cloud operating model really starts from the general transition of IT. Companies shifted from dedicated servers in private data center to a pool of capacity resource available on demand. Enterprise began with one cloud provider and later may expand to multiple clouds. A lot of companies leverage the benefit of scale and speed that public clouds offering to deploy their front-end applications. But at the same time, a lot of core business database and internal applications may still continue to reside on infrastructures in existing data centers. As a result, enterprise end up with a mix of multiple private and public clouds. So many organizations are trying to determine upfront before they start this journey is if we go down this path, we need a strategy that allows us to adopt any infrastructure at any time to support our future application development. And we want to be truly multi-cloud capable, and we don't want any vendor lock-in. So this dynamic multi-cloud data center reality is the foundation of the cloud operating model. And when we actually deco decomposing the cloud operating model, it breaks down to four layers. And today, we're going to focus in on the top layer, the application deployment layer. So this is where the workflow has changed from previously Developers have to go through operators to deploy an application onto a dedicated server to now developers themselves want to have the capability to directly schedule and deploy a great number of services across a fleet with a much higher frequency. And this is where the application automation comes in. Navigating the transition at this layer made organizations look for what are the right solutions to fit their business requirements. So we can see we go from vCenter, vSphere to something like OpenShift for their cloud, private cloud and EKS provided by AWS or GKE provided by a GCP. And you see each solutions have their own assumptions to applications and requires different configuration. It is not hard to see that ultimately this results in a very fragmented approach. Company will end up with different tools, different group of people, different skill sets, and inconsistent and complex workflows in the application deployment. To add a bit more validation to this, we can take a look at a few industry trends. So the first obvious one is deployment options are a lot more diverse than ever. And customers typically are having multiple environments for their container applications. So a mixture of different operating systems, such as Linux and Windows, and also a mixture of bare metal, on-prem, cloud, and multi-cloud deployments are becoming more popular with enterprise. But at the same time, management com complexity remains as a top challenge or top concern for container adoption. And this diverse deployment environments complicate this problem because companies always want to stitch these disparate environments together and a standardized application deployment approach that crosses this heterogeneity become imperative. But to be careful is the complexity can really turn your good initiative or project into a deployment nightmare. Just to double click on the complexity challenges that many organizations have experienced. Here are some kind of examples to the pain points around people and tools. So complexity could mean it takes a long time to deploy and set up the initial system and fit it into your existing infrastructure. It could mean developers will take significant time and effort upfront to rewrite their applications. It could mean a steep learning curve 
especially when you try to comprehend a complex system with a lot of moving parts. And also, when companies decide to migrate from on-prem to cloud or from one cloud to another cloud, it could be a painful and complex process to reconfigure the environments and change your applications. And lastly, no one wants to be waking up in the middle of the night, but things happened. So a lot, of com a lot of companies shared with us that the real challenge is to be able to troubleshoot effectively, you really have to master the platform, which could be a quite challenge. This is why HashiCorp introduced Nomad. The goal of Nomad is to really hide the complexity of underlying target environments from operators and developers and focusing on delivering a simple and flexible workload orchestrator to unify and consolidate all the different works, workflows into a single one. Most of our customers started adopting Nomad as a simple orchestrator, container orchestrator when they started on their orchestration or microservice journey. And as many companies with a large footprint in their brownfield environment, they will also move their non-containerized applications or legacy applications into Nomad without the need to force all the applications to be containerized or rewrite the application. So companies can keep a single orchestrator or a single workflow before, during, and after their migration journey. The guiding principle of Nomad is to orchestrate any application. The goal is to now to no limit Nomad just into fit into one operating system or one type of applications. It's not just about Docker ecosystem or not about a particular operating system or only container applications. So the benefit is to really bring the core orchestration benefit to all your applications. It is designed to be simple, lightweight, and flexible. So instead of rewrite your whole existing infrastructure to fit with your new tool, Instead, we want it to be fit into your existing infrastructure. This really enables companies to be able to do incremental application modernization. That means companies can avoid a long overhaul or re reinvent its existing infrastructure. They can achieve results fast and also be able to containerize or migration at their own pace. So the first use case Nomad users normally adopted is the simple container orchestration, which allows operators and developers to manage and deploy containers from just one to a million. We summarized some of the key benefits and values that our customers shared with us. So the first one is every company strive for faster time to value. Nomad is a single binary. It's less than 30 megabytes, even smaller than a high resolution pictures. So it can be easily deployed in customer's environment. And customer normally goes through a very short period of proof of concept and can move Nomad from dev test to production smooth and fast. And especially for customers already adopt other HashiCorp products such as console or VOD, Nomad seamlessly integrate with them can even faster your deployment. The second is once company introduced a new tool, they definitely want to onboard as many developers as they can. So simplicity plays a key role here. Companies shared with us, they take one or two hours, and in some case, even less than 30 minutes, they can onboard a developer that is new to the tool to start using Nomad to deploy their first application. The last point is critical for companies don't plan to or couldn't, couldn't afford to hire additional headcounts to build and maintain a new system or new platform. We have customers literally from one man shop being the first SRE in the company to three or four people, a small lean team that can still provide a robust platform that serves hundreds of internal developers. Many customers, after they're seeing progress, with their container orchestration, they started to move non-containerized applications into Nomad, such as Java, application binary, and legacy batch workloads. The biggest benefit for customers is they can see results immediately without too much effort on rewrite of their existing applications and infrastructures. And it also helps 
companies to improve their resource utilization by densely scheduling multiple applications to their previously underutilized resource. Lastly, even companies have legacy applications, they can still achieve zero de downtime deployment by enabling the modern deployment strategies that Nomad supports, such as rolling updates, blue-green, and canary deployment. So we have covered a lot about the orchestration aspect, but when you zoom out to look at the overall ecosystem and to the end-to-end -end application development process, and you will see Nomad is the orchestrator engine that can be extended to integrate with a lot of core components, such as networking to provide service discovery and service mesh capabilities, to integrate with security management, monitoring, CI-CD pipeline, storage, and specialized hardwares. And over the years, the Nomad team is continuously building out more and more integrations with the top solutions in each category to really drive the growth of the ecosystem. Every customer has their unique environments and requirements. So you may wonder, does Nomad fit into my environment? So Nomad can be deployed onto all major public clouds, private cloud, um, and on bare metal servers. And the real beauty here is if companies, if you move workload between on-prem and cloud with Nomad or from one cloud to another cloud, it's almost transparent to developers with very minimum re changes required. So that's why many customers are using Nomad for their cloud bursting or edge deployment across a hybrid environment. When companies consider the Nomad adoption journey, one of the common pattern we find is they started with containers and then moved to their legacy workloads. And then when they move more workloads into Nomad, especially when they're moving into production, they started adopting Nomad enterprise features to help them further simplify their operation and ensure they can run their platform in production safely. As they scale and grow internally and onboarding more teams and groups, they adopted governance and policy features to help them achieve better control. And in terms of Nomad commercial offerings, on top of our open source, we are providing enterprise platform and modules to provide enterprise features to help customers run their production environment more safely and efficiently. And it also comes with different levels of supports. That wraps up today's video. We just walked through Nomad as the application deployment layer in the HashiCorp's cloud operating model. I hope you find this video helpful. If you want to learn more about Nomad, please go to hashicorp.com resources. Thank you.